If you wanna to win today and moving forward, you must shift from thinking like an entrepreneur to being an owner. You literally create change as a capitalist, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner. It's the greatest gift that you can give to this world. And stifling that because you need short-term sales or profit is holding back the greatest gift that you can bring to this world. I'm super excited about our next speaker. He's a good friend of mine, also from Austin, Texas. He's spoken on our stage many times and is doing a lot of cool things in this space at all different levels. He's now the founder of Capitalism.com and is the author of his book, which is amazing, 12 Months to a Million Dollars, How to Pick a Winning Product, Build a Real Business, and Become a Seven-Figure Entrepreneur. Definitely check out that book after this. He's also best known for new entrepreneurs who are building towards an eight-figure exit. So I'm super excited to welcome Mr. Ryan Moran. Welcome, man. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> Everyone. Thank you for having me back. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you a new model, a model for building seven and even eight figure businesses. And it's a model that works faster, a model that is more fun, a model that is more in alignment with the change that you want to bring to this world. You see, I love, I love working with entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are the people bold enough to say, I'm the one who's gonna make a change. Whether it's I'm unhappy with the financial situation that I'm in and I wanna create something different, or it's I have some sort of mission that I want to execute in the world. It's entrepreneurs who are the ones who are willing to take that risk and create that change. But something happens, especially in this online internet business world, something happens where that creativity, that fun, that passion, that drive gets sopped up, it gets stuck in this need to make it look like everybody else. Because we get so enthralled with how everybody else is doing it, we get so sucked into whatever the modality or whatever the strategy is of today that we sometimes lose that juice that was the reason that we got into this. I got into this game because I wanted freedom, because I wanted creativity, because I wanted fun, because I wanted growth, because I wanted a better life. And so what we're gonna go through is not a model that looks like a cookie cutter way to build a business like everybody else. It's gonna allow you to create a seven or even an eight figure business using the tools and the strategies that you know to bring about what it is that you want to create in this world. And the byproduct, the side effect, is it's going to be very profitable, very successful, faster and more fun than the way that you may have been doing business up to this point. My name's Ryan, I run capitalism.com. I help entrepreneurs build seven-figure businesses that they can sell. But more importantly, I teach them to do it in a way that is a reflection of what they want to create. Because we're all really in this game because we want a better life. The first thing I want to do is just say thank you. I feel like I've grown up in the SellerCon community. I was introduced to this world because I was riding scooters with Matt Clark in Thailand, and he told me what he was up to. That was my first step into this world, into this community. I've now been on this stage seven or eight times. I've lost count. I built and sold a business because I got started in ASM1. I took that to about a million dollars a month in run rate, sold that at a valuation of $16 million. That was back in 2017 when $16 million was a lot of money. And today I have welcomed so many of the members of this community into my home for workshops or masterminds or just to hang out. I have invested personally in some of the businesses that came from this community. So thank you, thank you. Thank you, Matt, for getting me into this world. Thank you to all of you who have welcomed me and found my work meaningful. In 2014, I gave a speech, it was my second time on stage here, about going from zero to a million dollars in 12 months. And the video went viral. It was seen on YouTube, more than 1.6 million times, and I still to this day am approached by strangers on the internet and sometimes on the street in person of people who said that they built a seven-figure business because of the principles that were taught in this video. You can see that my, my pattern of wearing terrible outfits on stage continued to the second speech. I like to think I've improved just a little. <laughs> and the strategy that I taught in this book actually led to or that I talked about in this stage, led to a book deal. It got 
the book deal that became 12 months to 1 million, which became a bestseller. It peaked at number 10 on Amazon.com, all of Amazon. It beat out Michelle Obama and Jordan Peterson. So regardless of which side of the aisle politically you sit on, I defeated someone that you don't like. And the overall strategy that was taught on that speech and in this book came down to this simple formula, simple math. That four products that sell 25 sales a day is 100 sales a day. And 100 sales a day at approximately a $30 per sale price point equals $3,000 a day. And $3,000 per day, every day for one year is about a million dollars. It's actually about $1.1 million. And so all we need to do is find the four products that sell 25 sales a day, so we can have 100 sales per day. And at an average price point of $30, we've got a million dollar business. This is the formula that has worked for hundreds, if not thousands, of entrepreneurs to build seven and then on to become eight figure businesses. Now, this overall strategy is broken into three stages. These three stages I call the grind, the growth, and the gold. The grind is that early stage in your business when you're making a lot of hard decisions, when you're figuring out what product you're gonna sell and what your business is going to be about. Your only goal in that early stage is to release a product and take a sale. That's it. You don't have to worry about all the different ways that you're going to grow this business. It's about releasing one product and taking a sale. The second stage, once you have a product that is taking a sale, your job is to get that to 25 sales a day as quickly as possible. And we do that with audience building and pay-per-click ads. That's it. We focus on those two things to get that first product to 25 sales a day. And then when we have crossed that threshold, our job is to move on to the gold, which is where we will release additional products until we have four that sell a consistent 25 sales a day. So we've got 100 sales per day. That's a million dollar business. It takes about 12 months to do that. And this works. It works really, really well. And it's been working since we started talking about it in 2013 and 14. But some things have changed since 2014, haven't they? A few things have changed in our little community. One is that Amazon's way bigger. The sales from 2020 were five times what they were in 2014. So there's way more volume, way more opportunity than there was before. We now have automation tools. All of the things that we used to have to figure out as sellers, as e-commerce entrepreneurs, we now have tools and resources and agencies to be able to do this for us. And that's important to note because back five, six years ago, if you knew a little bit about the ins and outs of, a of Amazon, you were ahead of the market. That's not the case anymore. You've either got to be an expert or you've got to be partner with somebody who is. If you want to have a strategic advantage, on Amazon specifically. And this is the case with all e-commerce platforms. A little bit of knowledge is no longer a strategic advantage. So that is a beautiful thing because we have all these resources and tools, but it's also a challenge because now there is a greater barrier to entry. But those who break that barrier to entry are bigger than they've ever been. There's now $100 million businesses that just sell on Amazon. And we've proven that they're real businesses. There's now institutional money, there's private equity groups, there's real investors who are hungry to be a part of e-commerce. Friends, we won. <laughs> if last year taught us anything, it's that e-commerce won. Like, we did it. We were fringe five years ago, and now we won. Now, since there's so much that has changed, and since there's so much more volume, since there's more opportunities, it begs the question, is building a seven or an even an eight figure business harder now or is it easier? Which one is it? Now, I like to look at the total marketplace. I like to look at all of the tools that are available. I think about when I started my first business on a dial up computer on a shared internet that I ran from my college dorm room back in 2006. And I think about all of the tools that have evolved since then. There were changes that were happening, but the opportunity was so much bigger. As the internet matures, as there's more buyers coming to the, to the table, there's more opportunity. But there's also more people who are competing with us. So here's how I answer this question. 
Building a seven-figure business is easier now if you stop being an entrepreneur. If you stop thinking like an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur is like this catch-all word now. We use it to describe freelance graphic artists and we use it to describe Elon Musk. Entrepreneur is something that we use as this blanket statement for anyone who doesn't have to work for someone else. So to that I say, does that include homeless people? If, we're, if an entrepreneur is somebody who is willing to do whatever it takes to not work for somebody else, then are we just glorified homeless people? I like to play this game. Entrepreneur or homeless? Let's look at a few. They have complete control however they spend their day. Yeah, that was the dream that you signed up for, right? How is that going? You pay little to no taxes, right? Yeah, and then, and then you call your accountant. Yeah. You, wake, you wake up whenever you want. Isn't that what we said when we said, I don't want to have an alarm clock. Which one of us doesn't have an alarm clock? Or knows where their next money is going to come from. Has a steady stream, <laughs> steady stream of sales. Or uh, my favorite, spends time with their friends outside. <laughs> Is that an entrepreneur or is that a homeless person? <laughs> so entrepreneur is this catch-all word that we kind of throw around. And I know what it is like to have one vision of what our life is supposed to look like, me and my nice car looking all serious and successful, and then the reality, which is stressed out in front of the computer, worried that everything is going to fall apart. Or if I was being really honest, stress eating in front of the computer, worried that everything is going to fall apart. Now, something had to happen for me in order to really get this. I sold one of my businesses for enough money, a $16 million valuation, I held back some equity and I had a 50-50 partner. So I had an, enough money to be good for some time. And after I sold that business, I had this growth on my finger that I decided to go get removed. And it was this lingering growth that I didn't really give any attention to, but I went and had it removed and no big deal and I forgot about it. Till about a year later, the growth came back. And I went back to my doctor and he looked at it and he sent me to a specialist. No big deal, once again, we're gonna have this removed. I go to the specialist, the specialist removes it, no big deal, I went home, forgot about it. Until I got a call from that specialist who said, well, that growth was cancerous. Now, I'm 32 years old, and I heard the C word. And they were reassuring, saying, should be no big deal, should be able to take care of this with no problem. But hearing that word at 32 years old, after I've spent my whole life wanting to be free, wanting to get to this point, and then you find out that you have a cancerous growth, was a wake-up call for me. I went in for a proper procedure to have it removed, 99% success rate of having it removed. This is unfortunately the picture after it healed. <laughs> I couldn't find a picture of the gruesome aftermath. This is the picture of it healing. So it was a bloody mess before this picture was taken, a few weeks before this picture was taken. And I kind of wore this as a badge of pride in a way because it was just this reminder that I took of, I needed a wake up call in some way to realign what I really wanted out of this life. Until I got a call back. Although they thought they got it all, the cancerous growth was making its way back once again. So I went in for yet another procedure, yet another appointment. And unfortunately, it kept coming back. You would think that would be enough of a wake-up call, but one more thing had to happen before I really got it. A few months later, I got a call from my primary care doctor who said, we gotta talk. And when your doctor starts a conversation like that, it's never good, that's not a good thing. And he says, you have a thyroid disease. It's basically a disease in which your body is stuck in a stress response and it doesn't know how to get out of it. And so it is sending hormones and chemicals that are keeping you locked in this position of being constantly stressed. So here I am, 32 years old. I now have two scary diagnoses. And it was enough of a wake-up call for me to say, okay, I get it. The way that I've been grinding, the life that I had been building that was built on this foundation of being free needs to be adjusted because I wanted freedom coming into this 
and now I'm grinding like an entrepreneur. After a few months of medication, I experienced for the first time what it felt like to be calm. I didn't know that it wasn't normal to not feel calm. And wonderfully, spontaneously, within several weeks, the growth on my finger vanished. So that was enough cover for me to realize it's time for me to find a new way. I have to find a new way of building real businesses that can be scaled and sold without compromising my lifestyle. And I know now that there's lots of ways to get rich. So I only want to spend my time doing businesses that I enjoy and that I believe in. And also, I don't want to play this game solo anymore. I don't want to carry all of this burden on my shoulders alone. I want to create a big pie. I don't want to worry about how big my slice is. I want to do stuff that matters. I want to do stuff that's fun. I want to be creative. Over the last few years, I've been inspired by an entrepreneur whose name is Brian Lee. Brian Lee was the founder of LegalZoom. He was also the founder of The Honest Company with Jessica Alba. He was the first investor behind Honey, the app, which sold to PayPal for $4 billion. He was the founder of Art of Sport with the late Kobe Bryant. He has several billion dollar businesses on his resume. And I had Brian at our yearly event, it's called the Capitalism Conference, and I wanted to find out how he manages multiple projects at still a young age and how he seems so calm most of the time. Now, Brian described how he builds really successful businesses. So call this how to make a billion dollars, the Brian Lee way. His work is that he comes up with the product line and the idea for the business. Then he partners with someone who can spread the word, like an influencer or a celebrity or a marketing team. Next, he chooses a partner that's going to run the company. He partners with an investor who funds the operations, and then he says, hey, call me when you need me. And so Brian sits in the seat of control without being involved in every little detail of the business. That was interesting to me because it was very different from what I had learned from every other person who was in our little internet marketing community. So I drew this little diagram that looks a little something like Brian in the middle has an investor who is putting up the capital, he has an influencer who is spreading all of the attention, and he has somebody who is running the business. So rather than worry about all the little details of the business, Brian just has really three things to do. To come up with the idea, to create some relationships, and to make sure that everybody is supported in the way that they need to be supported for the business to hit its goals. This was interesting to me. And then in the last year, I became fascinated with an entrepreneur by the name of Trevor Blake. Trevor Blake was not an entrepreneur until he was 43 years old. If you're starting a little bit later, this should be good news for you because Trevor had never started any business until he was 43 and then within 10 years had three exits and those exits were worth somewhere between 300 and 600 million dollars. And as he says, I didn't own all of it, but I'm not complaining. The interesting thing about Trevor's model is that he never once hired a single employee and he only worked a few hours a day. Once again, this is interesting to me, and I'm starting to see that you can build really impactful businesses in a way that is different than how I had come to understand it up to this point. Now, both of these entrepreneurs sit in what I call the owner's seat, and I started to put their models together and realize that if you wanna to win today and moving forward, you must shift from thinking like an entrepreneur to being an owner. Now, when I say owner, keep these names in mind. Jeff Bezos only owns 11% of Amazon, and he's worth $160 billion. Elon Musk only owns 20% of Tesla, and he's worth $185 billion. Mark Zuckerberg owns about 30% of Facebook. He's worth $90 billion. Mark Benioff of Salesforce, he only owns 3% of it. He's worth $5 billion. Or Oprah, do you know Oprah only owns 5% of her own network? And she owns 8% of Weight Watchers, and she's doing fine. None of these entrepreneurs are worried about where their next sale or their next meal is gonna come from. They're okay. They don't own 100%, they just built a really big pie. I wanna be in that kind of mode. So when you make a switch from entrepreneur to owner, you start to build a bigger pie. You start to create a business in a way that's in alignment with who you are and what you wanna create. You're not operating from this place of tenseness, of worried about what the day-to-day -day sales are. You're not worried about managing every little piece of operations. Your job 
is something much bigger than that. Plus, you're, you're no, la no longer operating alone or worried about everything melting down. You're in offense mode. You get to play to win. And you get to do it because it's fun, because it's rewarding, because it, it feels like a reflection of what you want to do in this world. Isn't that what we want? It, it is, isn't that what we signed up for? Isn't that why we got into this game in the first place? So I put these models together into something that I call the owner model, and that's what I'm gonna share with you. The owner model is where you get to sit in the seat of control, but someone else is managing the other areas of the business. Now, we get this to some extent. Most of us don't do our own manufacturing. Most of us are partnering with someone who is doing all the manufacturing, most of the labeling. And we also get this when it comes to Amazon. Amazon is doing the fulfillment. They are doing the warehousing. They're doing most of the sales. And yet we forget about this in other areas of the business. Now, I don't want to be an Amazon expert. To this day, I have no idea how to print a shipping label. I do not know how USB codes work. Did I even say that right? I don't even know. So I want to be the owner. I don't want to know these details. That, let, that knowledge is not unique anymore. And so it's a waste of time for me to try and figure out these details. I, I want to own the business, not know all of the details of every little thing. So the owner's model puts you in the seat of control, while sales, product, and marketing are managed by other partnerships. And when you combine this with the 12 months to 1 million idea, you move through the grind, the growth, and the gold much faster. In fact, it's more like you just incubate a million dollar business. It happens very quickly with less stress, more ease, more fun, more purpose. Now, as an owner, you have three jobs. And a mentor by the name of Peter Shallard told this to me first. As a business owner, your job is three things. It's to set the overall vision of the company, then to partner with the best talent, and finally, to never run out of money. Those are your three jobs. Everything else is someone else's job. So your first move, and, and this is true whether you are starting something new or you already have a million dollar business. When I'm working with a client or with a student, that's already past seven figures, we go back to this first step because they tend to get stuck at seven figures because they did it the step-by-step -step way rather than doing it in a way that matched what they wanted to bring to this world. So we always start with what is the vision for this business? What's the change that you wanna create? If everything were to work out perfectly over the next three years, what does work look like and what does your life look like? When you start to get back into that place, you start to remember why you became an entrepreneur in the first place. You remember what freedom felt like in the first place, what you were after when you started this journey. Another question I like to ask here is, what's the transformation that my customer wants? And then if someone's really struggling, I throw this at them. All right, you're given a million dollars in startup capital. You do not need to rush for sales right away or pay attention to what anybody else is doing. What business do you create with that capital? That's how we start to have the conversation of the vision that you're bringing to this world. An example I like to bring up around this is Quest Nutrition. I had Tom bill you at one of our events, and he was talking about how his vision when he started Quest Nutrition was to end metabolic disease. That was their guiding principle. And the way that they did that was creating delicious, high-protein food that easily replaces junk food. Now, that makes their content strategy really easy. They're doing recipes about how to use their products to replace the junk food. And it made their first product really easy, which was protein bars. They had a cool valuation of a billion dollars last year. They sold to a publicly trading holding company. Now, what most people in our little world will do is they'll say, I hear protein bars are a really good market. And now they're competing with everybody else who is selling protein bars rather than starting from a place of vision, a place of creativity, a place of excitement, a place of mission. Now, I care about this because it makes it easier to build a successful business. When you're starting with that vision and that mission, 
all other pieces fall into place. It's so clear what the first product should be. It's so clear the person that you should hire. It's so clear what the product roadmap is going to be. It's so clear what the content should be. It's so clear what influencers you should partner with. Without that vision, none of that's clear. And now you're making stress decisions every single time one shows up on your desk. That might be why you feel stressed at the end of most work days. Let me tell you how I messed this up. When I was running my last company, we, we were maybe three years in, and we had a really solid run rate of four to $500,000 a month in sales. We were building a fitness company that had some of the best sports nutrition products on the market. We were really proud of what we were doing. And then one day, we noticed that all of the other companies that were kind of like ours were selling generic supplements and selling a ton of them. And for half a second, we forgot what our vision was. And we started launching products that looked just like everybody else's, that didn't match our target audience. We just knew that they would sell in the marketplace. Well, guess what happens? We spent the next year trying to outrank, outreview, outbully, outmarket all of the other companies that looked just like ours now. And we took our eye off of our customer and off of our vision for the next year. And we paid for that year. We paid for it in flat sales because our sales did not grow nearly as quickly because now our attention is focused on a completely different customer and a completely different goal rather than focused on building the vision that inspired us to start this company in the first place. And because our growth slowed, our profits slowed, which gave us a reduced valuation when we went to sell. I so wish I could have that year back and go on all in on the vision that inspired us to start this business. When you take your eye off of what you want to bring to this world and you start looking at things like data and other people's sales and other people's results, you have now compromised the magic that you bring to this world as an entrepreneur. I paid for that mistake. I hope you can learn from mine. There's a couple of resources that will help you clarify your vision. It's a great book by Cameron Harold named Vivid Vision. If you don't want to add another book to your reading list, I did a podcast interview with him about going from $1 million to $100 million in sales. I have all the resources, including these podcasts, over at capitalism.com slash sellercon. I also have podcast interviews, the ones that I did with Trevor Blake and Brian Lee as well. Those will help you clarify what it is that you want to bring into this world through your business. Your vision is what keeps you aligned on building towards something, sprinting towards something, rather than reacting to what everybody else is doing in the marketplace. So that's your first step. Imagine how much faster you would make those early decisions. What product should I sell? What content should I create? What strategy should I follow? Who should I partner with? Imagine how quickly you would move through those if you started with a clear vision, rather than asking what product do I sell or what do I do next, you know exactly what your vision is and it pulls you forward. That's what happens. Your second move as an owner is to partner with talent. Partner with people who will execute the vision. This does not necessarily mean hiring employees. Maybe not a single one. Today there are agencies there are resources, there are freelancers that you can partner with that match your vision that will carry it out on your behalf. Instead of asking, what is the next strategy that is going to grow my product line on Amazon, I ask, who is the best Amazon ninja in the world and how do I partner with them so that I can stay in the seat of vision, stay in the owner's seat, and create a partnership with that person who knows way more than I will ever know. And for me to try and copy them or learn from them is going to take me out of what I do best, which is holding the vision of this company. So I ask the question, do you want to be an Amazon expert or do you just want to sell a ton of product on Amazon? Do you want to be the person who is building the fan base or do you just want to have an audience of raving fans? Do you want to do it or do you just want to have it? Because I can guarantee you, whatever it is that you are pursuing, someone else has, and you can create a partnership there. 
and you can do it without hiring anyone or spending any money out of pocket. When I'm working with someone on a one-to-one -one or a one-to-group basis, I put them through this model where I have three roles that I'm looking to build partnerships with. Somebody to manage sales channels, someone to manage product line, and someone to bring the audience. So in Brian Lee's case, for example, this is someone who is growing sales, it is the influencer, and it's the CEO in his case. That might be a little bit different for you, it's a little bit different for me. For sales channels, that's just partnering with agencies who do this. It's partnering with a manufacturer who really gets what I'm trying to do. And it's bringing on an influencer or someone with an audience so that when my product line is live, I can take sales from day one. Can you imagine how much faster you get through that 25 sales a day hump if you had a list of 100,000, 200,000, a million people who matched your target market that were seeing your product on day one? That's possible when you focus on creating great partnerships. A good example of this is a friend of mine in Austin, his name is Steve. Steve is the quiet operator behind a few influencer brands. Now, he started just trying to add value to people that he knew who had audiences, and he ended up partnering with a, a friend named Zach. Zach has a Instagram following, it's flexible dieting lifestyle, and he looked at what that audience wanted, and they came up with a few product ideas together, and the first one, without any reviews, without any social proof, sold 10,000 units, full price, at launch. That's a great way to fund and start a business. Sometimes when I'm working with somebody, I have them pre-launch. I just have them take the sales first and then go have it manufactured. So you have the whole thing funded when you have that audience. We did a podcast episode together where he talks about how he works together to build those relationships and how he structures them so that you're profitable as soon as you launch. Can you see how much fun that feels when you've got a clear vision, you have an audience that you launch to, you line those up, and now you're out of the gate profitable with a lot of sales on day one? Once again, that's possible. And then you can go right into the process of product number two, three, and four. Million dollar business incubated quickly. There's a couple of resources I wanna to bring to you. One, we send a lot of business to two people uh, Sunken Stone is one, full disclosure, I've never worked with Sunken Stone, but they're like an Amazon management company, and they do like royalty and performance-based stuff. So there are resources out there that will partner with you and not break the bank and grow with you. The team that I work with the most is called Turnkey. They just have all of the systems for crushing it on Amazon and can plug your product line into them. There's a couple financial management companies that will take all of that headache off your back. The one we send the most amount of referrals to is a company called Fully Accountable. They are basically a fractional CFO who will look at all your numbers, free you up out of that, give you reports based on what your next moves should be, based on what the numbers are telling us. There's uh, several 3PL services that will take care of a lot of fulfillment off of Amazon. Places that we send the most business are Falcon Fulfillment and a place called Coetico LLC. Now, use whoever you want. I'm just showing you that there's resources that will manage just about every area of the business so that you're freed up to sit in the owner's seat. The third thing as an owner is to never run out of money. Because you might be thinking at this point, sounds great if you've already got a successful business or if you've got a bunch of funding, but what about me who is just starting this business and is bootstrapping the whole thing? I'd like to invite you to consider that when you have a very clear vision and when you have the relationships and the resources to launch this and grow this lined up beforehand, business and even funding shows up real fast, which allows you to grow even past the seven figure mark and get to eight figures very quickly. How many of you would like to know what the next Bitcoin is? And how many of you wish that you could go back in time and buy Bitcoin when it was at 100 bucks? Most of us, right? <laughs> well, the next Bitcoin is right under our noses. Because if you've got a clear vision and you have the resources to be able to grow a seven or an eight figure business, 
Don't you want to recruit as many dollars as possible into that investment? It's your business. Don't you want to put as much money into the thing that you know is gonna be sold for eight figures? Don't you wanna put as many resources of that as possible into it? Don't you wanna go get money from as many places as possible and put it into that? Your job as an owner is not to fund the business. It's to ensure that the business has the money it needs to be able to carry out that vision. No business owner, no entrepreneur has a lack of money. You have a lack of vision. You have a lack of, of relationships that make the business valuable. It's real easy to get money when you have a clear vision and excellent partnerships. My favorite example is Michael Dubin from Dollar Shave Club. He raised $100,000 to start Dollar Shave Club. $100,000. He said he skipped out of there. That $100,000 helped him grow what, was, what became Dollar Shave Club and sold for a billion dollars. Now, some people would say, oh, but he gave up part of the business. But he would have never built a billion dollar company had he not raised that initial capital. I think it's so interesting that when entrepreneurs are going to sell their business, when their business is at their highest valuation, they have no problem giving up 10 to 15% of the business to a broker, but they can't justify giving up a few points in the company to an investor who's going to make it possible for you to grow a seven or an eight figure business. Another good example of this is there's a company I love, it's called Keto Brownie. It's run by this great product creator. His name is Nick. He, he called me one day and he's like, I, I think I'm gonna shut the business down or sell the business or get rid of it. He'd been funding the whole thing himself. It was his baby, his pride and joy, and I loved the products. And so I, I just said, let's just free you up to be the creator again. Let's put some money into the business. Let's buy a lot of inventory. Let's get ahead of that. Let's put enough money in so you can hire the agency, you can hire the marketing team, you can hire the person who can sit next to you and do all the execution. You don't, he didn't have a vision problem, he didn't have a product problem. He just needed help. And so much of our passion, so much of our creativity gets stuck because we are unwilling to create partnerships out of the desire for control. That's not being an owner. So our goal with Nick has been to free him up to create from a place of fun and ease rather than thinking about what's gonna sell next so that I can stay in business. Again, there's a few resources that you can check out. One is Sellers Funding. They will invest in businesses to help them to grow their, their initial product line. Um, I have a fund called the Capitalism Fund that invests in businesses, helps them pass a million dollars, grow towards $10 million. That's at capitalism.com slash fund. There's also a great resource called Coetico. They do both 3PL and funding inventory. They're a great resource for people who are scaling up and just needs debt. I just want you to see that there's resources available for you for every single step of the process, every single one. Remember, your job as an owner is to set the vision, to partner with talent, and to never run out of money. Here's how this applies to that three stages to $1 million. When you're in the grind, when you're in those early stages, and all you need to do is take a sale. Can you imagine how fast, how fun, how effortless you get through that grind when you've got a clear vision that compels you and brings together others who want to support that vision? It happens so much faster. That product line launches so much faster when you start with that vision. That second stage when you're sprinting to 25 sales a day, can, can you imagine how quickly you pass that hump of 25 sales a day when you have partnerships with audiences who are sharing your product, voluntarily, who are creating the audience, who are getting people excited about it. Reviews come in faster. People buy at full price. You don't have to do search, find, buy, and giveaways and rebates. People are voluntarily buying because you control the audience and you have something that they want. And in that third stage, when you're releasing additional products until you're at 100 sales a day, how long does it take to release three additional products when you have the support, the resources, to be able to buy proper amounts of inventory, not worried about running out, and you can expedite your product rollout. That is where businesses just get built and incubated quickly, in less than 12 months. I've got the resources that I mentioned on the screen. Again, I just wanna say thank you. Not, not, not just for having me or for listening, 
or for supporting my work as this community has done. But I truly believe that the greatest contribution and the gift that you bring to this world is your drive for more, for creativity, for fun, for expansion, for wealth, for being willing to take the risk of having your desire seen in the world. You literally create change as a capitalist, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner. It's the greatest gift that you can give to this world. And stifling that because you need short-term sales or profit is holding back the greatest gift that you can bring to this world. I believe in and back entrepreneurs for that reason. So thank you for doing what you do, for bringing the change that you want to bring to this world. Thank you for supporting my work, for having me back. It's a privilege to be with you. Thank you. Thank you again.